Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Quixel's Dedu. We are going to be texturing this gun in a series of tutorials. This particular section is the first installment kind of going over the setup of how to get your model started and the basics of using Dedu in Photoshop. So before we actually get into Quixel, I want to go over some key points when you're using that Quixel. Quixel is mostly based upon masks, so if you don't understand those, it's going to be very difficult to understand what you're doing in Quixel. So, to go over mask inside of Photoshop. Masks are kind of like hiding and revealing certain parts of your image using a black and white image to say white is visible and black is invisible. So here I just have my bricks layer and I'm going to add a mask, which is this uh, rectangle with a circle cut out of it. Just clicking on that will make me have another thumbnail next to my brick texture. This white one is my black and white mask that shows what is revealed and what is hidden. So if I start painting with black, let's say I change my color here to black, got my paintbrush, just make it a bit larger. It looks like I'm erasing out this, but I'm not actually erasing, I'm just adding black to my mask. I can always bring this back, just changing my color here, and I can reveal it again. So it's, it's a non-destructive workflow because I can always go back and forth between these. Unlike when you're, if you're erasing, erasing something, let's duplicate this. Yes, yes. So if I go to my eraser tool and I erase out part of this, I can't switch back to colors and then bring it back. It's permanently gone. I can no longer get those that texture. And now I'm like, oh, I missed this brick right here and I really wanted that part. I can no longer do anything besides bringing that image back in. So very, very useful to use these masks. Uh, a couple more things about masks. If I hold down Alt on my keyboard and click on this, this shows me what my mask looks like. So I can have semi-transparent part of my mask, so like little bubbles or something. Um, hold down Alt again and click on the thumbnail, and it will show me what the image looks with the mask together. You can kind of see the outline. So it's very useful to display your mask and what it looks like by holding down Alt and clicking on the thumbnail. Another very useful thing, go on, I'm going to fill this mask layer with black. That's going to hide everything I have from this mask. Now if I grab a different brush, say this one, and I have white as my color, so I'm bringing back from my mask that is all black, I'm essentially painting with this brick texture. And that is really 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 useful and that's kind of the whole point of Quixel is you're going to be hiding and revealing these images that are used for texturing so you could go back and say oh I want a little bit less or a little bit more of this and have really interesting results from all these masks and unmasking uh, one final note is to make sure that the brackets that are around your thumbnail are on the, the mask when you're trying to edit it. Otherwise, I'm going to be painting black on this layer here. You see how it's updating a little bit, having the black texture? I'm actually permanently changing my texture image. So it's, if I hold down shift and click on this thumbnail, it will hide my mask and I just see the image below. So another useful thing, just holding shift and clicking on it. So you can see I have permanently changed this. So I'd have to go back in my history palette until I find a place where I didn't paint on my actual image. All right. Um, and I can of course fill this entire layer with black or white by hitting Alt Backspace, which is just the fill bucket, essentially uh, the hotkey for it. We're filling it black or filling it white brings it back, or 
uh, hides it. Uh, one more thing. Let's paint with some black and have a little smiley face. Because why not? There's this link icon between the texture and your mask. If I click on that link, it's no longer attached to that texture. So now I could actually move my mask around with my move tool selected, just shifting it all about. So I can line it up a little bit better if I need to, and click on that link icon again. I'll be good. With it linked together, when I use my move tool, I'm actually going to be moving the whole texture and its mask. See the bordering edges. Okay, so I think that's enough about masks. It is really important that you get this concept, black and white, and revealing and not erasing anything. You're only just hiding it temporarily. Once you get that, Quixel makes a lot more sense. So along that same vein of masking, uh, Quixel uses something called a color ID. Um, this is just basically really bright, different colors on your model. Uh, let's go to layer. That tells it, okay, I want this section permanently. I know this is going to be a different material, so I want to be able to easily select this over and over again without having to paint a mask. Um, I could have just different colors here applied to this and just say, okay, I want just the red area, and I'm going to be painting on that, or I want just this yellow area. Uh, so I can easily select these two different colors because they're very different hue. And that's the basis of a color ID mask. Let's see, I'll reveal this one and go into diffuse mode so you can see the colors. So it's just separating the different materials for this gun. Like there's going to be, this would be more of a wood texture, this black would be a metal, um, this tape would be more of a fabric-y like material, and so on and so forth. So I can define what this is going to look like before I start. When you start your Quixel project, it's going to ask you to input a couple different maps. Um, first you're going to input your mesh, which would be the low poly model here. Then it's going to ask you for a material ID, which is this very different colors. doesn't really matter what the colors are, just that they have a distinct value and hue difference from each other, as wide of a difference as you can. And the other maps that it will use is like AO, uh, normal maps, and so on and so forth. We'll get to that. But primarily, right now, the color ID map. So this one already has a color ID map, but I'm going to start kind of making my own from scratch here. So I'll make a new layer, and we'll call it base. And I just fill this new layer with a color. I'll use red, I suppose. Fill all the objects, and a couple of these objects are separated, these little eyelets. They're floating geometry, they're not actual attached to the geometry so it, it didn't capture it all. Alright, there. Okay, I think that's all the base pieces. So for this I'm actually going to import my normal map so I can see what areas are going to need a different material or color ID. Go to texture, import, and color map. Uh, this happens to have two UV sets. We're just going to use that one. Import my normals. Awesome. So now I can see a lot more of that detail that was not really visible with just the base model. And I can use this to get a better idea of where my maps are going to be. So I'm going to need to select a different color, so let's go complementary, I guess, and we'll make this tape um, painted. So first thing I want to do here is check on my settings. I do want to have a hard edge brush for this, and also my stroke should be constant pressure. 
the main reason for this is if I'm going to start having a soft edge like this one and this brush edge, it's going to start blending these edges. And whenever this blending happens, it's actually a different color. So you're going to actually be picking up like 60 different colors here. You want to have as hard an edge to this so it's very distinct colors as you can. So instead of this, I'm going to change my brush to hard brush, zero pressure, and it has a much harder edge and you're not going to get as big of a difference here. I'm actually going to turn to green, delete this layer, new one, maybe not green, go purple, looks good. Alright, and I want to change, turn on my normals layer so I can see what I'm doing here. So I want this to be as close as I can. If you were making this in uh, ZBrush or something, you'd probably do this a little bit different. You'd use your high poly to get your uh, color ID maps. But since I don't have that file, and I'm just kind of demonstrating how you would go about um, painting color ID maps after the fact, we'll be using this method. So try and get it as close as possible. Uh, any little difference here, you're going to see in the texture when you're done. So you want it to line up pretty closely. Get a little bit closer on the edge. And I'll go switch to my eraser, change the brush to a hard edge. Erase opacity is 100% because I don't want any uh, opaque lines or uh, transparent lines. I'm not going to go through this whole thing, just this strap here for demonstration purposes um, and how I would go about this. So we'll just, just this strap. This particular model, because it was provided from Quixel, already has a color ID map that I'll be using later on. Hide this layer. Now I can see a little bit of that red poking through because I didn't quite get it completely on some spots. So something I like to do to make sure I have a solid color and not missing little pieces is to jump over to Photoshop for a bit and duplicate this layer a couple of times. So hit Control P on your keyboard and it will update having layers file here. Alright, so here's my purple layer. I'm going to right click and duplicate the layer. Another quick way to do it is just hitting Control J. You'll notice right here there's a little red dot. I want that to be gone. With a couple of duplications, right there looks good. And then uh, merge them down by either hitting Control E or right click go merge down. Alright, save this file and we'll go back over to coat. Alright, check it in just the flat diffuse. Looks pretty good. Let's export this out. Now before I export, I'm going to make a couple of different changes to the preferences so that I can make sure I get nice clean lines. So going up to the edit menu and preferences. All the options we need to change are just in this general section here. Primary and this little edge padding area. First one is the real time padding mode. I want to change this to native padding. And what this does is just takes the nearest pixel of the island and uses that as its padding instead of this interpolate which kind of mixes this island and the next island closer to it which is what we want to avoid we don't want the colors blending to make a new color so native padding um, then this next section is just manual selection I just go I always want my padding on here so I'll always make padding 
and then padding width. This depends on your texture size, but I find that 32 is a really high value that works quite well for most texture sizes. And once you're done with that, click OK, and you should be ready to export. So I'm going to go Texture, Export, and All Layers Color. Um, I happen to have multiple UV sets. I'm just going to export out one. You probably won't have that error. And just save it as Gun ID or whatever uh, file set makes sense. Let's open that up. So here is my color ID map. A little bit of error happening up here, so I will fix that. Um, I do find that a little bit of fixing goes a long way. Um, you can also duplicate this a couple of times like we did when we were before we exported. Hit Control J, then hold down Shift, click between the two layers that you want to do, right click, and merge the layers. That still doesn't quite get everything in this one. So select the color, just paint in. All that. Now you do want to save this in a lossless format such as PNG, Targas. I'm going to go with PNG here and save that. A JPEG would not be a good file format because it degrades over time and you're going to have undesirable results. So that would be the process that you use to export all of this. Uh, but since I already have an ID map, I'm going to be using that to import. So now that I have my ID map, I will actually go into Doodoo -doo and start loading all that stuff in. So that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video when we actually start loading it into Quixel.